exactly since Indiana played a game that counted here, and today the Hoosiers ranked number 13 in the nation. Special, special place in college basketball, Griffin. Special place. Trace Jackson Davis, Alex Gross to Indiana kids. Take the jump, and Indiana wins it. Away we go. What an evening this is going to be. I'll show you the full starting lineups in a moment, but it's the expected starting five on both sides. Xavier Johnson, Race Thompson, Miller, Cop, Trace Jackson, Davis, and Jalen Hood, Shafino for Indiana. Shot clock down to 10 for Johnson. Xavier Johnson gives Indiana their first points of the season. Yeah, vital. Xavier Johnson needs to be aggressive, needs to be efficient like that. What a start for him on this game. Moorhead State, nearly a brand new team, lost four of their five starters, but they retooled in the transfer portal with seven guys out of the portal. This is their one returner, Jake Wolf. Drew Thelwell kicks it back to Mark Freeman. Wolf, Thelwell for three, yes! Moorhead State not afraid. Thelwell with the three, and the Eagles take the lead. In the Indiana two exhibition games, their opponents didn't hit their shots. They got opportunities, didn't hit them. It's a key. Make shots, you end the basketball game. Certainly a much better competition today against the Ohio Valley Conference favorites. 3-2, Moorhead State in front, a minute and a half gone. Off the mark from Thompson. Offensive board, Jackson Davis, the All-American to Thompson. Very, very alert play by Jackson Davis there. Knows that he's double teamed there. Easy dump off to his teammate and good friend down low. Losers will still very much have the advantage in size today. Just one big Moorhead State will start in Alex Gross, transfer out of NAIA. Oh, he was an NAIA All-American in Olivier Nazarene in Illinois. Here's a mismatch. Freeman didn't go. Cop the board. The Hoosiers ran a lot in the exhibitions. They will hear! The first bucket of the All-American season. It will not be the last today. Wolf trying to silence the crowd. Mommer for three. Well short. Another transfer, Mommer playing his first D1 game. D2 transfer out of Cedarville. An All-American there. But Shafino, the freshman. Thompson, he'll try a three. Oh, it hit the side of the backboard. And Mommer pulls down the board. Jackson Davis gets it to Johnson. Johnson. Oh, a little too strong. Good job by Thelwell to keep it in. Freeman, he's very speedy, but he'll slow it down for the Eagles. Head coach Preston Spraldon, he does not play an up-tempo speed. Prides himself on his defense. The Eagles last year, the best defense in the Ohio Valley Conference. Strong start for them defensively as well. Wolf got Johnson to pump fake. Thelwell will try another three. Nearly got it to bank it in. But Shafino. He'll rise up. But Shafino with his first buckets. Timeout, Moorhead State. He's a playmaker. He's a special guy as a freshman, Hood Shafino. He's got that. Back in Bloomington, an 8-3 lead for number 13, Indiana, to open the season. Let's take a look at our starting lineups. We mentioned them for IU, the expected five. For the Moorhead State Eagles, three of those five guys transfers. Mark Freeman, the main guy to watch. He's the fastest guy on the court, says Preston Sproul. Yeah, I got four guards up there as well. Interesting to see. Trace Jackson Davis was dragged onto the perimeter a lot earlier on in this game, so that size mismatch could almost play into their favor. Expected five for the Moorhead State Eagles. Three of those five guys transfers. Mark Freeman, the main guy to watch. He's the fastest guy on the court, says Preston Sproul. Yeah, I got four guards up there as well. Interesting to see. Trace Jackson Davis was dragged onto the perimeter a lot earlier on in this game, so that size mismatch could almost play into their favor if they're able to translate that into some nice mismatches on the perimeter with some of the big men from Indiana. Slow start, one of four from the field for the Eagles. Palmer gets it to Wolf. Wolf stripped from behind by Thompson. Thompson with room. The Hoosiers getting out and running. The hurrying Hoosiers have a 10-3 lead. Great from Thompson there, gets his head up, brings it in, patient. He wanted a bit of a contact to be called there. One of the end one, nothing given. 
LJ, LJ Bryant quickly into the game is the big for Moorhead State. And Alex Gross is out. Uh, bumping foul. Call on the Hoosiers. And it'll go on Johnson. That's just Indiana's first. First foul of the game. 8-0 run for Indiana over the last nearly three minutes. In front of a sold-out crowd of 17,222 tonight. Three ball for Redding off the bench. Air ball. Here goes Hood Shafino. Couldn't finish. Jackson Davis thought he was fouled. No call. Referees letting a little bit of contact allowed on both sides down low. Already seeing the Hoosiers really try to get out and run. They had 24 fast break points. 28 make it against St. Francis as there's Freeman with a three to silence the crowd. Not an easy bucket by him, but they're going to need, as you mentioned, Great, great transfer coming into the program. They'll need him to make big plays, not just today, but all year long. Felt like the Eagles needed that transfer from Illinois State. Thompson. Yes. He just kind of glided there. Was very patient in the air as he's going up with that. Easy. Banking in with the right hand. One of the best front courts in the country. Race Thompson and Jackson Davis combined 10 years of college experience. Redding looking to get it into Bryan, who's one of those few returners, but it bounced off his hands, and it's Indiana ball. First full timeout, a 12-6 lead for Indiana, 15 minutes left to play. It is going to be an incredibly optimistic year for Indiana. It's up to them to prove them right. There's a lot of doubts across the country. Can this team live up to it? Well, you got, got a guy like Trace Jackson, Davis Griffin. That helps. It, it, it helps it, a little. It, he's okay. Okay player. Guy who nearly went to the NBA draft two years ago before Mike Woodson came into the program. Considered it this past year. Got COVID, though, right before the NBA combine. Good ball move by the Hoosiers. Johnson off the glass. The kiss from the chef of this Indiana offense extends the lead to eight. Moorhead State made him work for that one, but he had a very, very nice touch off the glass to get that to convert. Hoosiers return four of their five starters, and all four have played at least four have played at least three seasons of college basketball. So much experience in that fifth starter, Jalen Hood Shafino. Highest ranked recruit for IU since Romeo Langford. Freeman, tough shot, yes. Freeman with some words for the bench as well. He is a walking bucket. Averaged 17 points two years ago at Tennessee State. Thompson, oh, good feed. Jackson Davis, like a knife through better the Indiana offense there. Excellent one-touch pass from Thompson to receive that and immediately drop it in the hands of Jackson Davis. That's a team that understands each other. Freeman, oh, my. Back-to-back <laughs> -back impressive shots by Mark Freeman. He played two years at Tennessee State. Last year at Illinois State, his scoring drop, though, he wasn't a full-time starter for the Redbirds. Now comes to Moorhead State in his fourth season. Still the starting five out there for the Hoosiers. Thompson already tried a three, he'll try again. Oh, 0 for two, that's something Thompson has tried to add into his game at a couple threes, three threes against Marion in the exhibition a couple weekends ago. Didn't attempt any last Thursday against St. Francis. House money is how I'll describe those race times of three-pointers. They're good when you get them. Only but that's when you, you, want to, you want to bake on him. Only 27% from the field last year from beyond the arc. Three ball off the mark from Khalil Thompson off the bench. Brian, the offensive board. Brian unafraid there, going down low against some of the premier big men in the country. Most experienced Eagle trims the lead to three after the Hoosiers briefly got it out to as big as eight. Jackson Davis is fouled. Wolf was just holding on to him. <laughs> and honestly, holding on for dear life is kind of a very fair strategy. They're going to have to do a lot of work, a lot of rotation. You're seeing it from Moorhead State. They're kind of bringing guys yeah. in and out to try and almost by committee try and handle Trace Jackson Davis because he is such a big threat. We're already seeing some of the depth and versatility that Indiana has on display. That feels like near constant rotation for Moorhead State. Speaking of rotation, Malik Renew. Will step out on the court for the first time officially in his Indiana career. And Tamar Bates joins him. First two off the bench today for Indiana. Here is the freshman. Let's go. Hassan Redding will bring it up. He's out there with Thomas Freeman. Wolf re-enters. Trent Scott, the freshman, enters, has just entered as well. There he is, Gross, the Southern Indiana native. 
with the turnaround hook. They're having a lot more joy down low than Indiana may want, especially with, again, as you mentioned, all the other broadcast strength that Indiana has. Crow's first team NAIA all last year. He had the most points of any person in NAIA. Cop log two. That one was halfway down. Freeman running quickly. Freeman, oh my! The Eagles have the lead. That was nasty. That was nasty, Griffin. And a nervous whipper through Assembly Hall. They did not expect the Hoosiers to trail at all today. Jackson Davis blocked by Wolf. Renew had it, but it pinballs around to Freeman. And here go the Eagles running again. Redding for three. Oh, that one was right on target, just too far. Kick to the corner, Scott off the iron, and this time Jackson Davis the board, and he's fouled from behind. And those are two you'd want back for Moorhead State. You have a lead against Indiana, heading this under 12 timeout. Get one of those good looks to go. You're not going to be giving them an ample supply in Indiana. And he's going to take a seat on the bench. He's already got 10 points on four or five shooting leading the way for Moorhead State, which is right now on an 8-0 run. Yeah, goes for kind of almost the opposite of what I was going to talk about. So now how can they cope without it? Because he's been such a spark for them, 4-5 or five shooting, efficient beyond just his incredible spark he's displayed. A press by Indiana and Geronimo. You can't run the baseline, and Geronimo moved his feet, so it's going to be Moorhead State ball. That's a sloppy mistake out of the timeout for Indiana. You would, I mean, that's the exact opposite you would want to do. You want to iron things out just like that. Jordan Geronimo along with Trey Galloway now off the bench for Indiana. So this is the all-bench lineup for Indiana. And now a five-second call on the other side. Scott, the freshman, couldn't get it in. I think that spot is just a little cursed right now, Griffin. They're not going to be able to get out from that area. So I think Geronimo's clarifying the rule right now with the referee. The coffin corner. Our referees today, Edwin Young, Lewis Garrison, and Tariq Lewis. Great three-man crew. It's pressed by Moorhead State. It's something Indiana prepared for, this full-court press. Galloway's going to be able to break it. We think, not yet, and he gets it to Bates. This is a really interesting lineup for Indiana. Put Shafino and Galloway, likely the two guys to handle the ball. Oh, what a pass! Bates from Renew. He completely, completely sold them there with uh, Trent Scott bit the three-point option, just thread the needle. Beautiful. Renew, he's 6'9". Oh, man, that was a dime courtesy of a Sterling point guard. Wolf needs some help to Mommer. Where will Moorhead State go without Freeman in the game? Offense, a travel. Yeah, we're Much better defense, and Indiana slowing down that Moorhead State offense that worked in the first couple minutes. Yeah, we're just seeing Preston Spradlin kind of just saying to his team, calm down, slow it down a little bit. They're looking a little frantic, I guess, without Freeman, without that stabilizer on the court. A little bit surprising that we saw him sit as Indiana is again going to break the press. Trey Galloway will handle the ball here for the Hoosiers. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Renew working on Gross to Bates. Galloway's got to go. Bates at the buzzer. Banked it in. Maybe not how they drew it up there, Griffin, but you're taking that every day of the week. Kind of a bit of a bail out there to get three points from a, what could have been a broken possession. So after an 8-0 run, the Hoosiers have reeled off five straight points. Where does Moorhead State go offensively? Thelwell off the iron. Eagles 3 of 10 shooting from downtown. They've attempted 10 of their 15 shots from behind the arc so far. Offensive foul, but Shavino pushed off. Xavier Johnson is going to re-enter for Indiana. Well, we saw a first look at that second unit for Indiana, Jack. There's been so much intrigue around that second unit. Indeed, yeah. And that one was digging against Geronimo for a moving screen as well. So I, I think it's interesting to see Huchifino kind of leading this unit. The amount of trust that Mike Woodson's showing to him, and right as on cue, Xavier Johnson stepping into the game, they've got options. A lot of rotation. This is still not an exhibition, still feeling themselves out for sure. Something Mike Woodson's talked about. He wants everyone to be able to handle the ball. So Trey Galloway gets some run. Freeman is re-entered. It's a heat check off the mark. Freeman tries again. He's fouled and hits. 
Mark Freeman, you got to be kidding me. Xavier Johnson is saying he kicked out his leg. I think Mike Woodson's stress on a similar fact. <laughs> it's an extra point. It's of less significance, obviously, a four-point play is consequential no matter the time in the game. Well, if, he you hit kick out, if you kick out your leg, that can be called an offensive foul. That is true. What a shot, though, by Freeman. I mean, you mentioned the first one was a heat check. Kind of heat check part two, you know, you're saying maybe that one was just a, a fluke in the system. Maybe three offensive boards as well for the Eagles, who were very undersized. That was an issue for Indiana. We're getting a look on the jumbotron of the replay. No one is happy. Saber Johnson still pointing up. Yeah, and he's going to sit there. This is, I think, uh, going to be a constant battle for Mike Woodson all year. How much can he ride out of Xavier Johnson? He's very frustrated going to the bench That's there. Johnson's second foul. He had foul trouble last game in the exhibition against St. Francis. Had four fouls. The Hoosiers off and go as Xavier Johnson goes. So Huchifino right back in. We'll get it to Galloway. All nodded at 21. An excellent start to this college basketball opener between two conference favorites. Indiana in the Big Ten, Moorhead State in the Ohio Valley Conference. Eagles lost in the OBC Championship game last year to Murray State. Hoosiers running out of time. Geronimo trying to make something happen. Yes. Well, that's a new look from Jordan Geronimo off the dribble. Last few games, we've seen him just kind of throw him down with some dunks. That was a nice bit of flair from him to show that off from his arsenal. Geronimo finished the season strong with 15 points against Wyoming in the Hoosiers NCAA tournament win. Renew is going to be called for a foul, just holding on to Gross. And I think even Gross is smiling a little bit of that call. That one definitely, not say it was a wrong call, it bailed them out. That pass was well over his Gross's head, but Renew had a bit too much of his hands on him for referee's liking. Bellwell will exit. Redding will enter. It almost feels like Morehead State is a hockey team right now. They're making yeah. line changes every two minutes. Some of that, you imagine, has to be conditioning. Freeman, you can tell he's feeling it. Gross, the NAIA All-American, and a Hope, Indiana, just an hour away. Fans want an offensive foul. Indiana ball. Well, the rest let him play. Relentless from Renew. Gross averaged 23 points. Name in front of them. They're having a great performance so far, and Freeman out there. Excited to see how Indiana tries to combat that, because that's going to be the back and forth that is going to dominate the next 8 minutes, 20 seconds this half. Two-point lead for Indiana. Back and forth start to this ball game. Interesting. We have not seen Trace Jackson Davis since the opening four minutes. He has no fouls. Renew has been busy, fouled by Brian, who will earn two shots at the line. Yeah, Renew has been aggressive since coming off the bench. It's been a big trade for him. He's not been afraid. He hasn't been backing down from these challenges. Free throw shooting been inconsistent in his first two exhibition games for the Hoosiers, but two fresh options here. Try and put that. Now, in the in the buckets, that, that count more significantly to the stats? Got a chance to try and have a solid start to the free throw percentage. Hoosiers were dead last in the Big Ten at free throw shooting last year. Speaking of that, Renew, the true freshman, 27th ranked recruit in the country, high level four star by 24 7 Sports. Originally committed to Florida, but when Mike White left and went to Georgia, Renew decommitted. Jalen Hood Shafino, as soon as he saw it, got on the phone with Mike Woodson, said, You got to go get this guy, and he did. <laughs> Galloway, what an offensive board. Geronimo said he wants it. And a foul called before the shot. That will go on Wolf. We've seen that it. will be Wolf second. We've seen it from Geronimo, especially on these free throws where he's been able to get those offensive boards. That was just an incredible leap from Trey Galloway. Just wanted the most. We've seen another look at the foul here, kind of just bumped by Wolf there. Still Indiana basketball, second chance still here. So Wolf with two, Redding in. Geronimo off the inbounds. Four points for Jordan Geronimo, showcasing that improved jumper. He's worked on that over the summer. Yeah, I think he just begin to stretch his game out a little bit more and more. It's just obvious. Continued improvement there. Freeman making moves. Freeman out of control. Yeah, he traveled. Just a little too fast that time. <laughs> it's almost his body weight was just taking him to the ground too fast because he had cut and weaved so quickly. You kind of take advantage of your 5'11 frame, and yeah. he got even lower there, the low center of gravity. Just got a little too ahead of himself. Continue to press here 
by Moorhead State. Dylan and Shafino, the true freshman, teammates with Renew at Montverde Academy in Orlando. One of the fifth best recruiting class in the country, teammates, hook up. Renew for two, and the lead is back out to six for Indiana. Hoosiers have made their last four shots. Easy when you have a number five recruiting class to bring them in quickly, especially when two of them have worked together a little bit in high school. Here comes the noise. Mommer traveled. Another look. You can tell just the chemistry between those two. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's been a huge presence for Indiana so far. And to have a guy like Renew off the bench to kind of offer those as an option, it's a special, special future for Indiana. Geronimo into Galloway. Back to Hood Shafina. Hoosiers on a 6-0 run over the last two minutes and change. Second unit getting a boatload of run. Renew spinning, turning, and the foul. He's fired up. He doesn't play like a freshman. He doesn't look like a freshman. And he might not be in Bloomington too long. And that's what the thought they want to have, Griffin. This is his first competitive game in Bloomington. If I mean, look, if he is a special, special profile for this Indiana team, if he can continue to develop the kind of raw skills that he has, Mike Woodson can try and shape him as something special. This has been so interesting as Renew is going to try to convert the old-fashioned three-point play. Gets the bounce. Hoosiers on a 9-0 run. We have not seen... Trace Jackson Davis since the opening four minutes. We have not seen Race Thompson since the 13th minutes. Mike Woodson has ran his bench for nearly 10 minutes as Jackson Davis is going to check in soon. Gross. Couldn't get the roll. Geronimo the board. Here go the Hoosiers. But Shafino. He'll learn two at the line. And you know what? Sorry, not Griffin. I don't think Thelwell is too mad about that one. You've got a head full of steam on Hood Shafino going at the basket here. Just kind of go up high. Not a dirty play in the slightest. Just going for the ball, competitive play. It's going to make him earn him at the free throw line. Shafino really initiated the majority of that contact. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was going pretty straight up. Hoosiers on a 9-0 run trying to seize control after a back and forth first 10 minutes. Mark Freeman with 14 points for the Eagles. Mike Woodson has had nearly his entire bench on the floor. So Chifino misses the first for the first 10 minutes. Finally, Jackson Davis will re-enter after only 10 minutes on the bench. Geronimo will take a seat. Fascinating to see the, the logic behind that after the game from Mike Woodson on kind of that long, prolonged break for Jackson Davis. And the Hoosiers did get off to a good start in the first four minutes. Chifino misses both, and Freeman pulls down the board. I don't think it was a case of him being upset at the starters. They just wanted to give the bench... Throw them into the fire, essentially. Freeman was nearly stripped. But Shafino just knocked it out of Freeman's hands, and it bounced off Freeman's foot. And the senior point guard is wincing as well. Yeah, that caught him a little awkwardly there. He's just kind of just moving around. Going to see if he's going to stick it out. Looks like it was just a bit of a bruise contact thing. He's not moving very well at all. Yeah, he's almost signaling himself to come out of the game. That was not a good sign for the Eagles. Renew favoring, or Freeman, I should say, favoring that left leg. Long two. Cash money from Uchafino. Indiana on an 11-0 run. <laughs> Offensive foul on Thomas. The game was close for a moment there, Griffin, but Indiana's really beginning to assert their authority. 11-0 run, and that's even despite kind of porous free throw shooting, just one of five right now on the day. They've left a lot of those free points, so to speak, up for grabs. Suzer defense starting to lock down the Eagles. No points in two and a half minutes. Jackson Davis just too strong, and it nearly went two. He had three different guys hanging on to him. Maybe preseason All-American team, Jackson Davis. No shortage of accolades for him. And 
Grace Thompson's going to get ready to check back in for Indiana. It has been a notably reserve heavy group for Indiana so far. Free throw struggles continue. That's certainly something to continue to talk about for Indiana. One. One of six now. Wow. Renu gets a loud applause exiting. He had five points. Pretty assist as well in seven minutes. Good start to his Indiana career. Jackson Davis misses both. Unbelievable. Wow. 107. We'll see if it costs the Hoosiers today, but you think opponents like on the road at Xavier, North Carolina, Kansas. Yes. It'd be hard to afford to shoot less than 50% from the three throw line, especially for the rate Indiana typically gets to the line. Three ball for Scott. In and out. Thomas, excuse me. Transfer from UMass Lowell on this new look. Morehead State team, 11 newcomers. Taken away. That was the Riverhawks transfer. Thomas with the steal. Now Fellwell travel. Too many turnovers. Already 11 on the Eagles. That is hurting them. And it's now nearly four and a half minutes without points. And it has been a majority of just turnovers. They haven't gotten a chance to put too many shots up. Shooting 42% from the field. Can't complain about that. A lot of steals by the Hoosiers and just a lot of sloppy plays, travels, bad passes by the Eagles. Six turnovers in the last four minutes by Moorhead State. Thompson fresh off the bench. Pretty moves by the six-year senior. Gross, nice job tipping the ball ahead to Thomas, and then it deflected off Galloway's foot. That should be a kickball on Galloway. We're going to call it Indiana ball. Yeah, near side ref, I don't think got a great vantage point of who got it, so it's from the far side. Even scoring so far by Indiana. Reese Thompson leads with six points. He's already had seven guys score for Indiana. Thompson to TJD. What a pretty play. Those two have played together for four years, and the chemistry is on point. They've had a lot of good ball movement in those passes down low when it gets tight. Thelwell off the mark. Jackson Davis with six points now on the day, and with that, he has just passed Scott May to move into 13th all-time on the scoring list for Indiana. Liam is battling cancer and was invited for an exclusive tour of Moorhead State's facilities before he committed to being an honorary Eagle back in late October, a prime example of how basketball can be so much more than a game. Guys. Audrey, that is a great story. Coach Spradlin talked to us how much he values the family atmosphere he's built. And Moorhead State, a six full year. Oh, Redding, what a shot. A much needed shot stops a nearly five minute scoring drought for Moorhead State. Trims the lead to 10. Yeah, these last four minutes, big chance for Moorhead State to try and just claw themselves back into things. Gonna be tough with Indiana's near starters back on the court. Gross got a hand on it. Falls to Mommer. Galloway was able to tip it away. We were all tied at 21, back and forth start to the game. Moosers went on a 13 0 run before that three ball. Uh, the sophomore guard, Redding, stopped the Hoosier run. Another cop's going to enter. Galloway will exit. Thomas will exit for the Eagles, and Thelwell will enter. Hoosier's trying to open this highly anticipated season with a W here. Another more tougher mid-major test against the OBC favorites, Moorhead State. Redding, long three off the iron. Jackson Davis the board. The Hoosiers have nearly their entire starting five out there with the exception of Tamar Bates. Blocking foul is going to go on Gross. Just kind of double back to that Moorhead State offensive possession. In the absence of Freeman, this team really does kind of lack that central threat. He's going to get another look at the blocking foul. That's Wolf here. He doesn't have his feet set as Jack Savage tried to kind of spin him there. 
Looked frustrated, kind of hit his head to the cork. Is, that's foul number three on him. Multiple guys with foul trouble now, and Wolf not happy sitting on the bench. He's one of their team leaders. One and one. Hoosiers will be shooting two the rest of the way now. As the ninth team foul on Indiana, or on Moorhead State, I should say. Finally, some made three throws for the Hoosiers. That has to feel good. IU had started one of seven from the charity strike. First time they've gone to the line and made both. Back out to a 12-point lead for Indiana. As you said, Jack, who steps up now for Moorhead State with their leader, Freeman, out? Thomas, long two. Falls to Jackson Davis. He'll slow it down. Saw the Hoosiers get out and run already a lot today. Offensive foul on Hitch Shafino. Pushed off with the elbow. First on Hutchifino. It's only the 15th foul on Indiana. Let's take another look. <laughs> eh. Jack, Jack is not going to give his opinion. I am unconvinced. They know more about basketball than I do, but I am unconvinced. Hoosier's defense has locked down the Eagles over the last 10 minutes. For a shaky start. Thelwell. No, nothing falling from deep for the Eagles. They're 5 of 18 from downtown. Jackson Davis! Hello! Two Indiana kids and Jackson Davis putting on the spin cycles on Alex Gross. Tipped by Redding and Bates, it falls to Bates. The Hoosiers trying to go to the locker room strong on a 17 to three run over the last seven minutes. Jackson Davis looks frustrated. A jumper off the mark for DJD. He looks like he's trying to just assert his authority onto this game, kind <laughs> of just looking at the student section, almost just trying to fire them up with his lack of reaction. 10 points for Jackson Davis, 4 of 5 shooting from the field. Surprisingly, played 13 minutes, took nearly a 10-minute seat on the bench. Hoosiers had most of the reserves out there for good 6-7 minutes. Redding, long 2, no good. Jackson Davis the board, he's got Tamar Bates. Instead to Galloway. Thompson! Oh, it hit the side of the backboard. It's going to stay Indiana ball. That would have brought the ceiling down. You saw Ray Thompson almost had a a, a childlike enthusiasm embracing with Galloway there saying, yeah, that was a nice pass. That was going to be that was going to be one heck of a play if they could have gotten that one off. But again, timing is so difficult, just ever so slightly off. Scott will enter for Redding. Something to watch out for as we're going to see. Dunk by TJD again. See the dunk by TJD on the other side. Jackson Davis up and under, off the glass, and the foul. You said it, Jack. He's trying to assert his will on this game. Oh, indeed. No, that was an incredible move by him. Experienced, in control. He's got a variety of moves in his sleeve. It's a sleeveless jersey, but there's somewhere in a sleeve somewhere. I'd say he's got a, a full... Highly loaded arsenal, arsenal of moves in maybe, his sleeve. Maybe they're hiding in that little pad on his right hand. Try to convert the three-point play. He does. Yeah, he's playing with that cast on his right hand. Didn't play in the season opener exhibition game against Mary. Came back against St. Francis. Didn't seem to be affected with 19 points and doesn't seem to be affected to that. Shows his dominance. Got one hand, basically. Still one of the leading scorers on the court here today. He is left-handed, so that helps a little bit. Jackson Davis guarding Thelwell. Oh, Gross was loose. Lays it in. Some great movement. I think Race Thompson kind of just wondering where the breakdown and communication happened defensively there to kind of just allow an incredibly easy bucket for Gross down low. Just the second bucket for Gross. Hopefully he has some family members in attendance today from Hope, Indiana, about an hour and a half to the east of here near Columbus with the Hauser High School. There's a nine-second differential between shot clock and game clock here for Indiana. Bates, NBA range. Jackson Davis, the board. Doesn't go. Tip again. Tries for a fourth time. And it falls to Thelwell. 
Morehead State can settle for the last shot. Thelwell, good if it goes. Yes! Oh, my. Well, something for Morehead State to get excited about going into the locker room, but it was all Hoosiers down the stretch. Jack has attempted 19 three-pointers and made six of them. And that's out of 27 overall field goal shots. They have been emphasizing the three ball. They've been trying to make these possessions as efficient as possible. Three-point ball, very efficient. Trying to just kind of emphasize that a lot. Part of that's the four-guard lineup for Moorhead State. Freeman will not start. It will be Tassan Redding instead off the bench with the rest of the starting four for Indiana. They're starting five. Thompson, Hood, Shafino, Jackson Davis, Cop, and Thompson. Inside to Gross. Deanna Native working on Thompson. Shot clock down to five. Gross is finding out the players are a little bit bigger and stronger in D1 than at the NAIA level. It's been held to just four points after averaging 25 points last year with Olivier Nazarene. Thompson's already tried two threes, but the third time is the charm. Got some nice technique, Griffin. He's got a bit of threat from beyond the arc. If he can have that at a 30, 35% clip this year, that's a really big ad for Indiana in terms of their offensive repertoire. Become a real stretch four. I mean, you think of him freshman and sophomore year under Archie Miller. He couldn't shoot anywhere on the floor. Must be at the three-point line. Wild shot from Wolf doesn't go, and here go the running Hoosiers again. Johnson decides to slow it down this time. Hoosiers only had four fast break points, but again, I think that number is a little deceiving. You look at the 20 points off turnovers, that shows you how much the Hoosiers have gone up and down the floor. Something we noticed in the exhibitions, it's translated today. But Shafino, that's pure. Give the four star freshman a little bit of space, and he won't miss that much. Four points for the freshman, and Indiana has a 17 point lead. This is their biggest of the evening. He's kind of guy when you get in the half court, very few things he cannot do on the offensive end. Redding fell and the foul will go on Cop. Yeah, just past his chest there, got a bit of feet tangled up there. I'm interested to see how Xavier Johnson handles his next few moments. You know, two personal fouls at the moment, played just nine minutes so far. He's got to kind of stamp his authority on things. You know, you don't want this to become too much of a discussion point this year if he's got a starting spot nailed on. He's got a great backcourt partner in Hood Shafino. Also a bit of a rival, though, in terms of being that primary ball handler. Uh, it is a, it's a fascinating story. Xavier Johnson is a fascinating player with all his ups and downs. It was very up and down for him last season, but he finished on a high note. A big reason Indiana had success in March. Wolf traveled. Another turnover for Moorhead State. Coach Spradlin called it poor floor balance for the Eagles, and they have been unable to solve it today, but you got to give credit to this Indiana defense. 14 turnovers, Griffin. It's not, not a pretty number in the slightest there, obviously. The IU student section is giving Jake Wolf, the Lipscomb transfer, a very hard time right now. One of the toughest atmospheres to play in the country. 17,222 today, a sellout crowd for this season opener more anticipated IU seasons in the last decade or so. Gross tipped it to Jackson Davis, but they'll call a foul. That's Gross's second. We go back to Xavier Johnson, Jack. He had, he had a bumpy first two games even in the exhibition, and Mike Woodson said right now he's playing too fast, and he has to understand, especially with Hood Shafino now on the team, he doesn't have to do everything. Speaking of Hood Shafino, he goes down hard. The shot won't go, but he'll have two shots at the line. But you mentioned it, though. Hood Shafino can potentially add to Xavier Johnson's game, but it can also bring added pressure to Johnson because he's not the primary ball yeah. handler, and that's a position that he's not used to, whether at Pitt or this past year at IU. I think what... Woodson and Indiana will hope that Huchfino can offer is a lessened amount of pressure on Johnson to make it work right now. You know, you obviously want it to happen sooner rather than later. You want the season to progress too much. You get into those Xavier games, the North Carolinas, the Kansases of the world, when you've got these great, great non-cons later on the schedule. Not to disrespect Moorhead State or look past this game right now, but he does have to kind of figure out where his level of aggressiveness lands for this Indiana team. And Huchfino has been a very special player so far for Indiana, so it can't hurt to have more good players. Never can. Indiana certainly added two really good ones in Renew and Huchifino. They lost 
Four players to the portal, but just one was a starter in Parker Stewart. Indiana by far the most production returning in the Big Ten, 83% of their scoring returning. Morehead State looking for an answer. Thelwell off the mark. Tipped and falls to Hood Shafino. What a pass to Jackson Davis. Oh, he couldn't finish. Tom Allen might want to look at Jalen Hood Shafino. That was a, a Great beautiful vision. pass. Wolf. Three ball rattles in and he points to the three to the Indiana student section trying to quiet them. There has been a lot of trash talk between both of these teams. Emotions running high between these conference favorites. Look, you don't want to poke the bear that is the Indiana student section. Well, Wolf steals it again. He's on the run and finishes off the glass. Takes another look to the student section and gives them some more words. 5-0 run for Jacob Wolf, who Preston Sproulton says is one of their big captains, their only returning starter. Averaged six points last year. Yeah, it's a very choice words for the student section there. Cannot repeat them here on the air. Can't? No. Thompson looking for Jackson Davis. That is a complete mismatch on the guard. Fell well, and he just rushed it. Indeed. Took it too quick. So it was a 12-point lead at the half. Moorhead State trying to chip away. Pass too high for Gross. Sprouting and Gross. And Moorhead State want a foul, but they're not going to get it. And the Indiana student section is back yelling at Jake Wolf. Well, we can't repeat that. They're chanting, you suck. The student section, the largest in the country here at Assembly Hall. And they've come in full force today. Got yeah, Renew on, changing the back in the front court for Indiana. Grace Thompson out. Jackson Davis is doubled to Renew. Johnson. Oh, was looking for Jackson Davis. That pass came out of nowhere and a little bit too hot. Those are the plays that certainly get Mike Woodson frustrated. Indeed. No, that one I think was just a case of he played Jackson Davis kind of sit a little bit more as that one was going to kind of be lobbed up to him. Helping the Detroit Pistons to a championship title over the favorite, the Lakers, in the 2004 NBA championship game. He says that Pistons team will probably go down as one of the best defensive teams in history. And seeing something like that firsthand is proof that defense wins games and strong defense and consistent rebounding is something he has been pushing the Hoosiers team towards in his two seasons at the helm in Indiana. Thanks, Audrey. Mike Woodson was an assistant coach on that 2004 Detroit Pistons team. On an NBA title. Turnover by the Eagles, Indiana Paul. Talking about defense, there are very few examples better than that Detroit Pistons team. And Bob Knight, you know, solid, solid head coach as well. Yeah, he actually told Mike Woodson, though, or at least Woodson th was told by Knight that he wasn't a good defender at all. But <laughs> Bob Knight wasn't always known for using a lot of positive reinforcement. Trace Jackson Davis with some positive reinforcement on this crowd. Thir 15 points make it for Jackson Davis. And he's already got a plethora of dunks. Made his own space there, executed that play beautifully. Wolf still hearing it from the student section. Crowd favorite here in Bloomington. <laughs> LJ Bryan has re-entered. This is a mismatch on Johnson. Thelwell an open tray. Splash. Drew Thelwell hits in his third season for Moorhead State. Guy who really blossomed over the summer, said head coach Preston Sprout in the lead. Cut down to 12. The Eagles just hanging around. Very patient possession there. Like that a lot. Renew, guarded by Thomas. Too strong, Malik Renew. That's a 6'5 guard, and Khalil Thomas trying to guard a 6'9, 235 forward in Malik Renew. It's just not fair. You will have very little issue adapting to the physicality of the Big Ten and college basketball altogether. Some of the Trace Jackson Davis, 71st off. He's like, he's got a Big Ten body already. Playing at Montverde Academy, one of the top programs in the country. The new one, a Geico High School Championship with Hood Shafino. Air ball by Thelwell. If you do anything bad in Assembly Hall, you'll hear about it. 
Wolf will take his seat, and the students will wave him goodbye. You could definitely sense when he would get the ball, he would be feeling the crowd and their reaction to him. He'd almost do these little, little rushing things a little bit. He got into the Indiana crowd's heads, and they may have gotten a little bit into his. Some court advantage, tough to handle. Renew for three. Ooh, it was right on the money, just a little too strong. Interesting to see him pop that. Scott's got a room. Jackson Davis, a ferocious block. Cop for three. Yes! <laughs> it is too loud to think. The loudest Assembly Hall has been all season. One of their biggest mid-major tests of the year. We have Bethune Cookman back here on Thursday and another, another mid-major test before we hit the road a week from Friday to take on Xavier. Feels like it might be a last gasp here for the Eagles to try to hold on. And we have still not seen Mark Freeman. I'm going to have to assume he's not coming back into the game for the Eagles, their leading scorer. Tweet his ankle late in the first half. Thelwell with a seam. Jackson Davis got a hand on it, and it still went in. But Shafino, Jackson Davis, Bates, Cop, and Renew. The five on the floor for the Cream and Crimson. Jackson Davis with 15 and 7 right now to lead Indiana. Shot clock down to 10 for Indiana. Bates, a three. Off the back iron, Redding soars for the ball. I'm liking ball moving though from Indiana to get that shot open. Thomas, a quick three. Just a little too strong. And a foul called on Bryan. Loose ball foul battling with Renew. Yeah, you saw Renew almost take like a bit of a, a jump forward, a step forward as that one was put into his back. If you're wondering why the crowd is very angry, it's because their public enemy number one is returned to the game. Third team foul on Moorhead State. Aforementioned Wolf re enters. As is the true freshman Trent Scott at a team who's got a lot of playing time today. Another press, half court press by Moorhead State. Rangers have been able to break it without too much problems. Moorhead State prides themselves on their defense. They were the second best scoring defense in the OVC last past season and watched their walkthrough this morning. They practice almost only defense. Renew, oh, what a move. It's moves like that. It's why so many people are high on him at Indiana because that's special. That's the kind of movement that he's got to be able to move onto his left hand. Very, very mobile guy. Scored in double digits in the two exhibition games. He's got nine today. Wolf to the rack, rejected by Renew. Falls to Geronimo. Cop again. Yes! You don't want to let this guy get hot or he might bring down Assembly Hall. The lead is 20 for the first time today. Wolf looking for Brian to hit the rim. Up Brian's shoulder, Indiana ball. And it's just a madhouse in Bloomington right now. Man. They... It's Indiana, the number 13 team in the country, and the favorites in the Big Ten. You see head coach Preston Sprouted for the Eagles. He has just been assessed a technical foul before the break. So Miller Kopp is going to get two shots and the ball. A street throw shooter on the Hoosiers. I think some of the atmosphere maybe just starting to boil over a little bit for Moorhead State. You know, Coach Sprouten does not have good memories here. He was a graduate assistant on Kentucky in December of 2011 when Christian Watford hit a shot to take down number one Kentucky. Didn't enjoy that experience, was an assistant on Moorhead State when they lost here in 2015, and his team now faces a 22-point deficit. Geronimo needing some help. He's pressed by the Eagles. Gets it to Bates. 
Manu, so confident with the ball. Butchafino, Bates, Cop, and Jordan Geronimo on the floor for Indiana. We've seen a whole lot of different lineups Mike Woodson's put out there today. It's been interesting. I'm, let, I'm liking that he's letting Mother Crop kind of ride it here. He's hit two, three balls over the last couple minutes. and I mean, he didn't barely touch the ball yeah, exactly. in the first half offensively, and that has really frustrated Indiana fans at times. That's what I was going to say, Griffin. It wasn't just the lack of shots. It was just we weren't saying his name because he wasn't involved in the play. It was all off ball for him and inbounds like this. He's an elite defender, so that's a big reason. On the court, there's Cop again. Too strong, Jordan Geronimo out of nowhere. A human pogo stick, and Indiana leads by 24. Hoosiers on a 9-0 run. A Mickey Knack foul is called on Tamar Bates. back by Geronimo. Pop is taking a seat and he's going to get a lot of applause. I think he'll take credit for an alley-oop there rather than a missed shot. Just two team fouls so far on the Hoosiers. They have played pretty clean defense. Maumer in some traffic hits the shot. Get their senior transfer from D2 Cedarville. Indiana's really made them work for their shots. It's been kind of acrobatic efforts like that in the majority of things. Renew working on Brian. And the foul, Malik Renew into double digits. He's got 11. It's, it's just incredible, Jack. I think all three times he's hit the floor for the Hoosiers. He has impressed and then some each time. 100%. No, he's got some improved. I don't think in his mind he's thinking about, I have a nice, solid role as a number three big man on this team. Maybe questioning the authority of some of these seniors. Maybe a, a starting spot maybe up for grabs. Started that very first game against Marion. Well, he said he wants to be a spark plug off the bench. He knows that is his primary role right now. He converts the three-point play. Missed some three throws earlier. The lead is now 25 for the Hoosiers. It has ballooned from a 12-point lead at the half. And the Eagles just have not had a whole lot of options offensively in this second half. score. Freeman out with an angle injury. Suffered early or late in the first half. Wolf, long two, will hit. <laughs> 12 points for Malik Renew. That's second on the Hoosiers, only behind Trace Jackson Davis, who has 15. Bates has got a lot of playing time today for Indiana. We're looking for Galloway. Got tipped. Balls in the hands of Redding. Bunny floater got count nothing. Bates looking for Geronimo too far. It falls to Galloway. And he is fouled. That was a wide open sequence there, Griffin. There wasn't much concerted dribbling possession of the basketball from either team. And Wolf kind of just puts an end to that with the foul there. He'll take a seat on the bench. It's the fourth foul on Wolf, who's had a frustrating day. And there are now 17 turnovers and 17 fouls on Moorhead State. They've played hard, they've played valiantly, no doubt, but it's hard to come back from those mistakes. They're down a couple injuries as well. You see some of the guys at the end of the bench there. Had 24 three-point tries, Griffin. Only eight of them have fallen. Not helped either. Galloway hits the first. And has on that Indiana's been unbelievably efficient on offense. 27 of 44 shooting. That kind of clip is just really, really hard to deal with. Well, let's say it. Hoping to get a couple guys back soon. Julian Norris, the freshman guard, Evansville native, who actually faced Malik Renu and Jalen Huchifino in the Geico High School Championship game. Norris played for Link Academy in Missouri. They lost him up there. This Galloway hits both. He's out, as is Jalen Hawkins, the grad transfer from Norfolk State who has gone to three straight NC or won three straight conference championships. So two guys, Preston Spradlin hopes to get back soon. Little press applied here by Indiana. First time we've seen that today. Bellwell, kind of a leading scorer that's on the floor for the Eagles. He's got 11. Geronimo got a piece of it. Back to Thompson, it was tipped, so no over and back. Three, 
Redding with some dance moves. Mommer out of control. They're going to bail him out, though, with a foul on the Hoosiers. Just IU's 13th foul. Not a ton to read into here with Indiana up by 25, but it's Xavier Johnson is the guy who's riding things out as the starter remaining on the court in terms of being that primary ball handler option. I imagine Mike wasn't trying to let him a little bit more leash, try and get him in a bit more confidence, a bit more of a rhythm with some of the backups. As much as maybe Indiana fans a little bit concerned about Xavier Johnson's struggles first three games, he was a little bumpy to start last season. Yeah, and yeah. Obviously, you remember the end of his season. The last 10 games, Jack, he averaged 16 points and six assists. And if outside of Trace Jackson Davis, you want to look at the one reason Indiana made the NCAA tournament, made the run in Indianapolis in the Big Ten tournament, it was on Johnson's shoulders. Indeed, and it's you can take the highs with the lows of the player like Xavier Johnson, who rides that kind of emotional roller coaster as a player. Eagles back with their press. Lead is 24 for the Hoosiers. Galloway finds Bates. It's a three on two. Geronimo up and finishes. Eight points for Jordan Geronimo. He hasn't missed a shot today. Four for four. He does that very frequently off the bench. Just a great, great guy in the paint. Really hard to defend against, as you mentioned, Griffin Pogo. Scored ten points against St. Francis on Thursday. He's continuing his great end of March. Bates in space. Bates the slam. If anything, Griffin, it feels like a punctuation on what should be an Indiana win, just in Brit, in transition, nice defensive play. A 28-point lead for the Eagles. Renew's going to be called for the foul. It was only a 12-point lead at halftime. Way back when, it was tied at 21 halfway through the first half. But the Hoosiers have seized control in the second half over Moorhead State. For a season opening win, year number two of the Mike Woodson era in Bloomington. Hoosiers highly anticipated season. First preseason ranking since the 2016-2017 year, which was coming off the Big Ten Championship under Tom Crean. Gross working on Renew. Geronimo got a piece of it from behind, and Renew pulls down the board. That's a man's rebound by the freshman. She said it. That was impressive from him. Through a lot of bodies, just rise highest and just have the just put your hands on it and bring it down. Looking inside for Renew, he's fouled. Maybe it's not a surprise. Obviously, Indiana has the size difference, but domination in the paint has been a huge storyline and Indiana's shooting has been very good inside. 42 points in the paint. Very, very good. Especially compared to the 14 of Moorhead State. They leveraged that. We saw early on almost the hockey-like changes they were making to try and guess, combat Indiana's, or Indiana's size down low. That didn't amount to much because it's hard to keep that rotation going and keep the rhythm going against an Indiana team you just got big bodies down low that are so talented. The depth, obviously, having Renew, a big part of it. Indiana had Jackson Davis, but at times where he got into foul trouble, it was a little bit more iffy. Michael Durr was in the program for just one year at an up-and-down season last year for Indiana. Fell well. Renew pinned it off the backboard. Malik Renew has been everywhere tonight. 13 points, two blocks, four boards. A little bit of it all. Well, that, there's a freshman mistake by Renew. Clear moving screen. And that is his fourth foul. So he is human. <laughs> and that was something Mike Woodson talked about. Really all the freshmen. He said that defensively is where these freshmen need to make the biggest leap. I think there definitely needs to be a case of tempering the expectations for these freshmen in a lot of departments. Huchifino and Renew, while great in many aspects, they've got senior counterparts that need to take a big brunt of the load as well. And Xavier Johnson, Ray Thompson, Trace Jackson Davis, pit maker pick down low. Don't want to put too much onus on the freshman too early. Experienced guys that have bonded defensively for Indiana. Tough shot for Mommer, didn't go. Renew is running the floor again. Renew, coast to coast! You gotta be kidding me! That's a 6'9 man bringing the ball up the floor. That's not supposed to happen. That is a confident dude right there. Stripped and a little bit too tall for Bates. Tries to save it, he does, but it falls right back to Thelwell. 
Open three. Scott will give it a go. Yes. First points for the freshman out of Tampa, the only freshman that's gotten playing time today for Moorhead State. Lead though still 28 points for Indiana. Geronimo, he'll try a three. Too strong. And it bounced off a couple of arms and it will stay Indiana ball. Going to see some substitutions. Two new guys coming into the game for Indiana. Logan Duncan and CJ Gunn. Malik Renu is going to exit and listen to this crowd. Now another very interesting prospect for Indiana in Logan Duncan. Guy had a lot of weight, built up a lot of that body mass over the summer. Trying to be a bit of a more Big Ten option down low for Indiana. Johnson, Duncombe, Geronimo, Bates, and now C.J. Gunn, the true freshman out of Lawrence North, making his Indiana debut. Bates from the elbow. That's pure from Tamar Bates. He's quietly had nine points tonight. Guy trying to make that sophomore leap. Perfect word to describe it. Quietly. He's been kind of just a nice contributor in moments across the game. Was a little banged up a couple weeks ago. Didn't play in the exhibition opener against Marion. But a guy that Mike Woodson says has been one of their most consistent guys through the summer. Burke, pump fake three. In and out. Tip back to the Eagles and Thelwell. There's 47 points, though, tonight for Moorhead State. This Indiana defense delivering on its high expectations. Bounced off the legs of Mommer. Johnson, Geronimo! <laughs> that kid has a streak of spectacular in him. That well trying to quiet the crowd air ball. Well, we see some great plays. Freshmen have been fantastic tonight, and let's set it down to Audrey. Oh, first, of all, let's uh, let's take another look at the at the alley oop. Actually, oh, that's okay. unbelievable, Griffin. Unbelievable. All right, Audrey, what you got on the freshmen? I gotta speed the process up. They can't play like freshmen, is what Indiana head coach Mike Woodson told us on media day earlier this fall. And we have seen freshmen Malik Renew and Jalen Hood Shafino do just that this early on in their debut season. While Woodson's fifth-ranked freshman recruiting class is talented, they came to play in an extremely competitive program. And Woodson shared that when his freshmen first got here, they couldn't beat the first unit and would leave practice with their heads down every time. Well, once Woodson reminded them that there will be a time that they can beat that first team in practice if they just work hard and are patient, and that's exactly what the newcomers did. IU head coach Mike Woodson said the winning in practice has been back and forth ever since that little pep talk, and you're seeing that freshman talent transfer over into this game day. Well, and you see the second unit contributing as well with Logan Duncombe, his first points of the season. Moorhead State calls a timeout. They are in another scoring draft. It's Moorhead State, 337 left to go in the second half. Jack, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're in the end uh -oh. of what appears to be Indiana's first victory of the season. What has impressed you most about Indiana so far, and what has concerned you the most about Indiana? The versatility at which they've been able to play their game. Had a couple guys come in, have a have big roles, and it's kind of been almost different moments for different guys. Renews had his moments. Pochafino, Trace in that first half. And speaking of new guys coming in, Anthony Leal, Logan Duncombe, C.J. Gunn, and Caleb the Banks, and Geronimo staying out there. So all bench now. Indiana has now played every scholarship player. Redding for three, air ball. And it falls to Caleb Banks, the freshman making his debut out of Hampton, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. How about thing that has concerned you the most? Probably the free throw shooting. One of seven as a start. Against this, against Moorhead State, didn't matter in the end, but if you have that kind of start against another team, more competitive team potentially, that's a big problem. Gun for three. A little bit too strong. Imagine the adrenaline's a little high right now for the true freshman, C.J. Gunn. Lawrence North High School out of Indianapolis. Hit six, three threes and six shots. And their two exhibitions got the silky shot. Indiana basketball posted a, a mic'd up with Lucia Roseman ahead of that first game against, against Marion. 
And I loved what he was saying to the freshmen. You know, you're nervous, you're nervous. And they're kind of saying, no, no. But he's saying, it's your first college game. Of course you're a little nervous. And I love that, you know, pure emotion because that is the case. Geronimo with the steal. Look out! Scott Dole's had to look out. Yeah, and the stands there. Wow. Geronimo tried to throw down such a big flush, it bounced off the back rim and ricocheted over the head of athletics director Scott Dolson over on the sideline. Yeah, I'm un I'm not going to claim to know what Mike Woodson said to him there, but that was a moment of pure emotion where he's in one-on-one. -on -one. I, I hope someone got a picture of him soaring through the air because we were at the angle and it was beautiful. Oh. Wolf. Will get a bucket to try to silence his haters in the student section. Morehead State still at only 49 points. Indiana held Marion to 42, and they've done a sterling defensive effort again today. The reason the aggressive defense of the Hoosiers, they have forced a ridiculous 21 turnovers by the Eagles. Gun, or excuse me, Banks, banks it in for his first points of his Indiana career. Nice bit of explosiveness across that baseline. Body control to, at a tough angle, put that one in. Positive sign for the freshman. And well, gets it to Redding. Still most of the starters out there for Moorhead State. Learning experience, no doubt, for the Eagles. Third straight year, they played a top 25 team on the road as Wolf's three is off the mark. Leal to gun. Too strong. Banks goes down, and the loose ball foul is going to go on the Eagles. Looks like we're going to have our first review. No more. I like that, Griffin. Caleb Banks will have two shots and the ball. Freeman, 14 points all in the first 14 minutes for Moorhead State. <laughs> and sprained his ankle. That was certainly a turning point in the game. Student serenading Wolf, thinks it's the second. I, I was enjoying the reaction from the Indiana players because they were kind of upset that the crowd was giving the left-right action in the middle of Banks' free throw preparations. Couple substitutions here for the Eagles. Gun. Bam. <laughs> These are some nice moments from Banks, from Gunn, from Duncan off the bench. First points of his Indiana career for C.J. Gunn. Seen all four freshmen get some work. Approach a minute left to play here in Assembly Hall. Hoosiers going to go to 1-0, and taking care of business of one of their tougher non-conference foes this season. They we're tied at 21. Indiana win on a 13-0 run. 20-8 run going into the half, led by 12. And then pulled away. Around the 15-minute mark, things got absolutely electric here in Assembly Hall. Preston Sprouten got a technical foul, and the Hoosiers just completely wore down the Eagles. Wore down is a great word to use to describe it, Griffin, because it was a strong initial push by Moorhead State, but to maintain that over 40 minutes against a team as talented as Indiana proved to be too much of a task. Gross hits both. Certainly a night he'll remember, the Southern Indiana native. But Hoosiers did a great job slowing him down. Five points for a guy that averaged 24 points last season. Olivia Nazarene number one. Gun, or Banks, excuse me. Both of these freshmen are spectacular players. And Banks through contact. He was out with an illness last Thursday against St. Francis. Looks to be in midseason form. Even these freshmen off the bench. Likely won't get a lot of playing time this season for Indiana. Look awfully good. Scott rejected by Duncan. Oh. Saved it to Thelwell. Wow. Falls to Gross. Shot clock turned off, and that should do it here. Indiana takes on Bethune Cookman on Thursday night, 8:30 Eastern. That will be on the Mothership Big Ten Network. So. Your wallet will be happy Thursday night. It's free on the Big Ten Network. And then IU has its first big test of the season a week from Friday. They take on Xavier on the road at the Cintas Center. That's going to be a fun one. But for tonight, it's a Hoosier victory. 88-53 the final. Moorhead State made it interesting early, Jack, but the Hoosiers pull away. 
And they are 1-0, the much-anticipated Indiana season.